we had been praying for him. It's a wonder the boy rebelled for so long. <laughs> Bonnie got a kick out of that. It was a Sunday morning, and I guess Gracie couldn't have been four or five, something like that, and uh, I'm not going to embarrass you, Gracie, just your dad. <laughs> no, not really. And Jim was sitting in the back. We had, we had uh, uh, three just like this, but all the way to the back, and I was ministering, and I, and I said, you know, some dads, all they do is go home after work and sit in a recliner and drink beer and smoke cigarettes. Gracie was sitting on her dad's lap, and she goes, <laughs> Jim's like, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Went to him, go get your wallet out of the car and bring it on in. <laughs> that was a long time ago, Jimmy, isn't it, though? You know, now, we laugh about that, but it wasn't too many Sunday nights after that. We were singing a song, uh, Fire Fall Down, and Jim got out of his seat and came up and gave his life to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Been with it ever since. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that good news? So good. So good. So good. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, we want to tonight to receive the Lord's tithe in your offering. And <laughs> hallelujah. And we are three days away from the epicenter. Amen. And um, go with me to Psalm 68. Psalm 68, 19. Remember, he said, the last four months are loaded. And Psalm 68, 19 may be familiar, but notice something. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. Daily loads us with benefits. Look at the words, daily loads us or loadeth us with benefits. That's what we're looking, looking for. Amen. And he said, and I keep going back to this instruction, there are more than this, but this is what he's got us focused on. During this time, don't limit God. Because he said the last four months were loaded. Right. Bottom heavy. Amen. Amen. Don't limit God. Now, now remember, God is only limited by what you'll believe him for. Right. And, and I'm not going to take time to get into this because we've got something to get into in the message. But I, I taught you in men's meeting yesterday, you gentlemen, that, that when Jesus talked to the man in, in uh, Mark chapter 9, and then he uh, was talking to the disciples in the book of Matthew, in Mark 9, uh, 17 through 23, uh, he talked with the man, was, was helping the man with the, the son who was demon-possessed. And the man said, Lord, he said, if you can do anything, help us. And Jesus said, the King James says, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And the church and religion has taken that. You know, well, if you can somehow just believe, then God will do anything. Well, 
But the problem with that is they see very little evidence of that. Because they're always trying to get to a place where they can believe. Amen. Jesus said over and over again, multitude of different translations, the, the Woost Bible says, as for this question of yours, if I can do anything. Amen. All things are possible to a believing one. In other words, I'm a believing one. Everything's possible to me. Now, people will say, yeah, but that was Jesus. Yeah, but you have his faith. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. Have God's faith. I did not get a different faith than Jesus operated in. It's his faith. Amen. Faith comes by hearing the word. Amen. Actually, the word in, in Romans 10, 17, the word cometh is not there in the original manuscript. So it says faith by hearing. The word by denotes how something gets to you or the or origin of something. Faith by the word. Faith by hearing the word. Faith, its origin, where its source is by hearing the word. Amen. So faith... By hearing. Do you see this? And the more I hear it, and, and I'm not just talking about listening to CDs and tapes and, 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 and all the, which, the, which that's even kind of outdated. Uh, podcasts, YouTube, whatever you listen to it by. That's the avenue. But faith by hearing. Faith by hearing yourself speak the word. Amen. 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 And Jesus said, I'm a believing one. Say out loud, I'm a believing one. And all things are possible to a believing one. Now take whatever you're dealing with and line it up next to that. Amen. That's a limit breaker. How many, how, how much is all? What's that? All. You know what all means in the Greek? All. all. <laughs> Amen. If I said I'm giving you all the money in my pocket, well, I'm not going to give you a thousand and, and keep five hundred. Right. It's all. Yes. Notice I was giving you more than I kept, but you understand. <laughs> if I'm saying all, the whole fifteen hundred's going to you. Amen. <laughs> Not tonight. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> but you said it right. Amen. <laughs> then in the book of Matthew, the disciples got with him and they said, and they were asking him a question. They said, why couldn't we cast him out? Right? right. Remember what Jesus said? Because of your un. Belief, prefix U-N, denotes non or no. Because of your no belief. So people will say, yeah, but the, no, the disciples did not believe they could cast that demon out. Amen. Amen. Understand this. You don't use the name of Jesus against the devil and him not leave. I should say that again. You don't use the name of Jesus against the devil and him not leave. But even though it's the most powerful name in the universe, I have to have a belief in it. Amen. So in reality, they could have cast that demon, demon out. But they thought they couldn't. And Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Then what did he say? If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed... You'll say to this mountain, be removed, be cast in the sea, and it should obey you. And nothing will be impossible to you. So he said, no thing, not one thing, nothing. Now take whatever you're dealing with and put it up against that. Now if you are spiritual, now it doesn't look impossible. Well, I'm believing to come out of debt, but how could I ever come out of debt? Put it up against that scripture and then answer that question. Right? Yeah, but Pastor, I'm $300,000 in debt. What is that to a God that doesn't count 
money. You understand what I'm trying to say with this? You're daily loaded. Right? Amen. Amen. Well, I need $350,000. Okay, nothing's impossible. All things are possible. Nothing's impossible. Yeah, but they said they need this amount of money from me by this time. All things are possible and nothing's impossible. So what does that mean? What they're saying, it's possible for you to do it and it's impossible for you to not do it. Amen. Right? Amen. Amen. The Lord told Brother Copeland, he said, Kenneth, he said, I have a million ways to get you whatever you need. And then he said, and you can't think of three of them. Amen. Are you following me? What, what he was saying to him was, you're trying to figure this out in your head, and you can't. You need to put it all on me. I got a million ways to get it to you. I mean, just think about it. Think, think about the way provision came to people in the Bible. It came through people. It came through angels. It came through birds. Amen. Amen. Are you following? It, it was found. It was given. It was discovered. I used to tell people all the time, I used to tell the ushers, if a dog starts walking up that aisle and it's got a little bag in his mouth, let the dog on in, let him on in. He's bringing us something. Amen. Amen. Something good. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, but they said there's no more money for raises. Oh, but they haven't run into you yet. They'll find some. Why? Because you're loaded. I say because you're loaded. Say it out loud. I'm loaded. Daily. Loaded with benefits. Look at your neighbor. Punch him in the arm. Say, I, nothing's impossible to me. Unless you're sitting by your wife and you get knocked out. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I perceive, I perceive that, you are that you are fully supplied. Completely filled. Completely filled. Rich, rich, rich. rich. Daily loaded with benefits. Amen. 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 My wife has a look that we call the I mean business look. That look will freeze water. For those of you that have ever got it, whoo, Jesus. I see it and the only thought I think is I hope she's not looking that way because of me. Amen. It, but it's an intense look. And it's not ugly. She, you all know my wife. She's not a mean bone in her body. But I know, when she, and, and I've seen this over and over again. I remember one time she was uh, making breakfast. And we were talking about something that was, that was going on. And I'll never forget, right, right over the eggs. This is many years ago. And uh, I say that because I don't eat eggs anymore. But, I mean, I'm not preaching that you don't eat eggs. You know, that's doctrine of demons. But anyway. <laughs> And she looked at me about a certain situation, and, 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 and she, she popped that hip out <laughs> and had that spatula. You better watch out, boy. I'll break that phone. <laughs> I know what he's trying to do. Drunk. <laughs> she popped that hip out. It's okay. 
she popped that hip out and had that spatula. She said, I'm not playing what I preach works. Woo! I wanted to go burn a barn for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But she said something to me recently. We were talking about the last four months of this year being loaded. And man, that look came on her again. She said, that's right. I'm getting every bit of harvest that belongs to me this year. I'm getting it all. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory. Man, you get fired up with an intensity about that and things start changing. Amen. You got to be intense. You, you got to be intense about what God said. You, you got to be focused on it. You, you got to stay. This is what God said about the last four months of this year, and that's what I'm going to have. Amen. 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 Yeah, but Pastor, I've made mistakes. You better pack them up. Yeah. Amen. Join the I've Made Mistakes Club. Anybody raise your hand and say you haven't made mistakes? We are having an altar call for liars right now, big liars. Because everybody's made mistakes. Everybody's failed. Amen. But God didn't say the last four months were loaded for people that haven't made mistakes. He said the last four months are loaded for whoever will believe it. And I believe it. Amen. What we sing tonight, the time has come to stand for what we believe in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I told him this morning, I'll tell you again. Y'all remember Tim Kirtner, Tim and Patty. And of course, they're, they're in the Little Rock location now with us. And uh, Tim had been working on this job. And, and you know, I didn't know that Tim was such a culinary guy, but he's, he's really a good cook. And, and well, I mean, not that it's surprising, but you know, he, and so he went to work at this, this uh, uh, food place. And he just, you know, he needed a job. So he took a job, wants to take care of his family. And he was working there, and uh, <clears throat> it was always, they thought, you know, temporary, what he was doing. And they came to him, and they want to hire him, and here's what they said. And we're going to give you a 40% pay increase. 40%. Who gets a 40% pay increase? Me, all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Benefits, better hours. Hallelujah. God doesn't give you a pay increase and give you worse hours and worse working conditions. John was telling us the other day, was it at men's meeting? He was telling us the other day, how much money did you generate? In one month? 31 what? 31,722 dollars for his company. Now, now get this. He works less hours than anybody else. But the top money maker. Why? Because he tells his boss, I can't work those hours. I got something going on at church. His boss is a good godly man. Don't misunderstand me. But he just made it plain. I'm, I'm going to go to church on this night. I got overcomers on this night. I'm putting God first. And what? He's loaded. So how do you work less hours but be the top money earner? Loaded! When you say something's loaded, what you mean is that it is stacked unfavorable, un, unfairly to your advantage. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that good? Wow, I can keep preaching right there. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's bottom heavy. The last four months are loaded. But what, what do you need? Don't limit God. I, I've, been, I've, been, I've been looking and saying, where, where, where are the limits? What, what is the limits? Now, I want to say this very, very carefully before we move on. This is not designed to make anybody feel like you're doing something wrong. But if there's a limit, there's a limit. Right? And, and, and when he says, I want you to lengthen your stakes, your, your ropes, expand your dwelling place. Well, remember who he was talking to. He was talking to Israel in this sense, that you were, she was a barren woman, no children. 
But he was saying, you're going to start bringing forth children again. So you got to get a bigger place. Amen. Amen. And how do you do that? You got to pull up the stakes, get longer ropes, drive the stakes deeper, and remove the limits. Amen. Amen. You got an idea what the limit might be? Anybody? Well, do yourself a favor right now. You got pen and paper there. Write it down. Write it down on a piece of paper. Then I want us to do something, right, as we're receiving the tithe and the offering. Oh, glory. It's early yet. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, normally, I would receive communion over this. But, of course, we we don't have our elements ready. And that's fine. This is the Holy Spirit doing this. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is. I don't need to know what it is. Nobody else needs to know what it is. You know what it is. We're going to put it away from us. I found that to be so successful years ago. Man, if there's something you're trying to get the victory over, you get those communion elements out, take communion over it, and then put it away from you. Amen. Now, for some, what you wrote down pops up occasionally. Amen. No more. I'm telling you under the unction of the Holy Spirit, if you put it away from you tonight, it's not coming back. It's exciting, isn't it? (laughs) Hallelujah. I, I don't know if you sounded like you believed that or not. Remember what, what, what limits God? The only thing that limits God is what you're capable of believing Him for, what you'll believe Him for. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And, and, I, and something else keeps popping up in my spirit. And don't expect that thing to be staying in your memory anymore. Because there's times, every memory, every, every time you go somewhere, you can remember what was going on, and that thing is there. To stain it. I told the Lord one time, I'm tired of that memory staining all my remembrances. It can be a failure. It can be a shortcoming. For some people, what stains you all the time is remembering how every time you wanted to do something, you didn't have enough to do it. Yeah, we were going to go here and we didn't have enough. Right? Yeah, we were going to go here. Or, or a flesh fit. Or whatever it is. Whatever has been the limit. Or thinking. You know, your wife wants to do something and you're always telling her how you can't. Right? That's a limit. I'm telling you something. God wants to build wealth into your existence. Amen. You ready? I say, you ready? I want you to hold that thing up to the Lord. Hold that up to the Lord. Say this right now. Lord Jesus, Jesus, I come to you as my Lord and Savior. And I bring this limit to you. And I put it on the altar. And I submit myself to your Lordship. And I say under heaven and in the hearing of God the Father, all the holy angels, every devil, And my brothers and sisters, sisters, I lay this on the altar. I I put it away from me. me. And I say, say, in the name of Jesus, Jesus, you will limit me no more. more. In Jesus' name. name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now shout about that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Now then, however you choose to dispose of that, it's up to you. Throw it away, shred it, burn it. It's done. It's done. Why? How do I know it's done? Everything's possible if you believe. Nothing is impossible to a believing one. I'll say this, and the ushers are going to come with the envelopes. Folks, I'm telling you something. The, the, the Lord dealt with Pastor Michelle and I. Now listen to me. He dealt with Pastor Michelle and I. Before we came out of debt, he dealt with us to come out of debt. And we took steps to get out of debt. Amen. Amen. And, 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 and we did what we needed to do, and, and those limits popped back up. Popped up in my mind. Amen. And, and we got back in that mess. Amen. And then around 2009, 2010, the Lord started dealing with us to come out of debt again, and He was serious about it. It seemed like every message we heard was about being debt free. Every one. Amen. And we just set our face to do it. And we put it away from us. And I've told you the story over and over again. When we started, I was looking at the papers here some time ago. When we started coming out of debt, it was, it was exactly $210,000 in debt. $210,000. Man, we set our face to come out. And there's a lot that goes into it, but it suffice it to say, nine months later, we owed no man anything. Amen. Well, how'd that happen? You know, I don't really know. I don't know what happened. And here's the beautiful thing about it. The biggest amount of money that came into our life at one time was $24,000. But God gave us wisdom because we removed the limits. Instead of saying, well, I can't call them and ask for that, he said, why not? Call them. Right? But people, here's why I hear people say, oh, they'll never go for that. Did you call them? Well, no, then you don't know, do you? Amen. Amen. One of my children used to not like to work. Anybody ever have any kids like that? <laughs> and I'd take them job hunting. And they'd go in, come back out, and I said, well, what'd they say? Well, yeah, yeah. I said, did you ask? Well, no, get back in there and ask. If you, what's the rule of the kingdom? Ask. ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, you know I owe so much amount of money. Would you settle it for this amount? Oh, they'd never go for that. Listen, honey, did you ask? Then you don't know. Amen? Somebody was telling me the other day how all they're checking things off their goal list and checking things off their want to list. And, and I'm just seeing how things happen. Amen. Amen. So, maybe you're in debt. You put that limit away from you tonight, expect it to start going away. Remember what the Lord told us? He said, imagine going to bed sick and getting up well. Right? He said, imagine going to bed in debt and getting up out of debt. He said, that's not possible. Tim Kirtner went to bed with making a little bit of money and got up the next day and was told he got a 40% pay increase. We saw Jaden and, 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 and his family today. The doctor one day told him to, go, to pack that baby up and take him home and die because there was no hope of him living. And, and, and now just this past week, they took him off the transplant list. Shh. Don't you tell me, don't you tell me anything's impossible. Amen. Because you're too late. Amen. Amen. I've already seen the impossible done. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, if you'd like to sow tonight, there'll be an usher in the aisle with an envelope. They'll help you give tonight. Oh, glory. Mm-mm-mm. We can go no home now and say it's been good to be here. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
You know, there's just something about a decision of quality. And a decision of quality is a decision about which there's no more discussion and from which there's no return. I've made the decision. That's it. Uh, I'm not discussing it anymore, and I'm not going, going away from it. Paul said once he ascertained what the will of God was, immediately he conferred no more with flesh and blood. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you that for a reason, because that limit's going to start talking to you again. And you've got to answer it. I'm not limited by you. I was running in the park the other day and, and running back up the trail, and the enemy started running his mouth. You say, what'd you do? I stopped and said, look, you have nothing to say about this. It is none of your business. You don't have a vote. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the Lord of my life. This is how it's going to be. Yes. Don't let him run his mouth. Right. I, I say don't let him run his mouth. Yes. Don't let that limit talk to you. Amen. It's trying to come back into your life and limit you and stop you from going where God wants you to go. Don't you do it. Don't you let it back in your life. Amen. 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 Glory, to Glory to God. Shoo. Amen. Amen. I remember when, when uh, this church, and, and back many years ago, 20 plus years ago now, it was called Full Gospel Tabernacle. And uh, Pastor Michelle and I were told that this church was available. <laughs> we went and told another preacher that it was available. We said, hey, you, you want to pastor a church? There's one available. <laughs> Out there in DeSoto. You know what they said? Oh, no, I wouldn't want to pastor that church at all. Amen. I heard a lot of that. You can let that limit you. Amen. Yeah. I've heard person after person talk about, well, you're out here in DeSoto. You know any good thing come out of DeSoto? <laughs> well, here we are. Yeah. Touching the world. Yeah. From DeSoto, Kansas. Yes. Golly. <laughs> Limits. Limits, limits, limits. Am I helping you? Yes. Don't you let those limits talk. Well, you'll never be. Shut up. You don't have a vote. Don't you ever let anything, and I'm saying this for a reason to somebody. Don't you let a devil tell you that. Don't you let people tell you that. You've got to be nicer to people than you are to the devil. But you understand. Don't, Jamie, don't you let him say it. I'm not singling out Jamie. I just saw him. Don't you let him say it to you. Nobody, don't you let him ever tell you that you can't. That's a limit. That's limiting talk. Amen. You tell me I can't, I will just to show you I can. Amen. But the key is don't let it talk. Don't put yourself in a position where that limit has the, has the ascendancy over you and the lordship over you anymore. You don't have, you don't have a right in my life. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do, do you understand that? Oh, glory. Is this okay? Because yeah. those limits will try to creep back in. Y'all guys better sit down for a minute. They'll try to creep back in. I had a direction to go, and the Holy Spirit said, go this direction. And, and listen to me, they creep back in. They, they try to ease back in. Because, because they know you're not just, listen, the devil never shows up to you like this. Hi, I'm the devil. Right? The Bible says he disguises himself. Angel of light. Right? Always trying to slip in there. And, and make his ideas sound good. Limits sound good because they make you comfortable. Right? They, 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 they sound good because they make things look easier. I mean, after all, if, if I don't try anything or go after anything, there's no risk of failure. I don't get hurt, right? 
Yeah, but you know, even the world knows this, nothing ventured, nothing gained. You know what stops so many Christians from going on where they want to go? is just their lack of, of, of stepping out and breaking the limits. I'm finding that. Hallelujah. Do you see this? Look, look at this real quick. In Ephesians 3. Now remember, what we're having is a Holy Ghost meeting. And a Holy Ghost meeting is this. The Lord told Brother Hagin, a Holy Ghost meeting was number one where the Word is preached or taught. A Holy Ghost meeting number two is a meeting where the Holy Ghost is in demonstration, where He is leading and guiding and manifesting Himself. Amen. And number three, where the needs of the people are met and the joy of the Lord is manifest in the people. So we focus on number two, a meeting where the Holy Ghost is in demonstration and where He's leading and guiding and manifesting Himself. Amen? Now notice something. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3 and 20. Now we've, we've, we've read this scripture numerous times. Show me this in the Amplified Bible. I want you to see something. Because uh, I'll read it from you from another translation as well. Now, unto him who, by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us. Now, stop right there. Keep that up there for me. That's a limit breaker right now. His power is at work within you. Right? His power is at work within you. Hallelujah. Is able to carry out his purpose... Here's the word, and do super abundantly. Hallelujah. Amen. Far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. Amen. Amen. The Woost Bible says now to the one who is able to do beyond all things, super abundantly beyond and over all those things that we're asking for ourselves and, and considering in the measure of the power that's operative in us. So he's saying the measure of the power that God has that's operating in you is how you determine the measure you can reach. Amen. Well, now people will say, what's the power that's operating in me? The power that's operating in you is the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, if there was enough power manifested to raise Jesus from the dead, death couldn't hold on to him. Hell couldn't hold on to him. That means there's no limit in your life that can hold on because that power's at work in you. Amen. That's a limit breaker. That's right. Oh, glory. The Lord said to us one time, He said, there are things you've not allowed yourself to think about because it seems too far out there. Amen. But He said, what do you want? What do you want me to do? No matter how unthinkable it seems or appears, no matter how impossible it looks, watch, I'm on the job, I can turn it. If you can believe it and ask for it, I can do it. And remember what the Lord said to us in, in this year when the last four months were loaded? He said, believe for the unchangeable. Oh, that'll never change. Oh, it does this year. Amen. My wife and I just made the decision. We're not ending this year with anything left on the table. I'm not, I'm not ending this year with anything God said He wanted to do for me this year not done. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, say, I'm not leaving anything on the table this year. Not one thing. Not one thing. I know you've heard these things, but you need to see these limits. 
Moses had finally, God had finally worked and, and Pharaoh is kind of starting to give in a little bit and, and, and uh, he tells uh, Moses, he said, yeah, you can go, but all the livestock's got to stay here. Moses said, uh-uh, not one hoof. Not staying in Egypt. It's all going with us. See, the enemy just wants you to, to let a little bondage remain. Just a little bit. I told him in healing school the other Thursday. I've been pre teaching in healing school on this subject, the word on healing. And, and we've been going from the first part. I mean, we started, we started in uh, the five books of Moses and have just been going. I, I've, I'm, I'm going to have part three this week. And just the word on healing, chapter after chapter, verse after verse, book by book, what God says about healing, translation after translation. And you would be shocked. How many times in the Bible it says where your sickness and disease are concerned that Jesus took them, carried them, delivered you of them, took them off your shoulders and walked them away from you. Now the enemy knows that God did that and Jesus did that. He just wants to see what you'll hold on to and what you'll live with. Because then it can limit you. Like the lady that got healed in Brother Hagin's meeting, she couldn't hear. I mean, she could, you know, if she sat right next to the speaker, she could sort of hear. So she was all but deaf, had hearing aids. And of course, this was back when the technology wasn't very good. But anyway, you understand, you can't hear, it's a bad thing. I think it is. Well, she came up and got prayed for. God instantly opened both of her ears. She started walking back to her chair, and he noticed she was on a, on a cane, had a, a problem there. He said, hey, sister, come back up here. Don't you, don't you want God to heal that? She goes, oh, this? No, I can live with this. I can't live without them ears. Now, I'm glad she got healed from her hearing deficiency, but why not get it all? Amen. 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 I mean, I mean how, you know, who does, a, who does a tune up on their car and changes their plugs and changes three of the six? Right? Am I right? Or it changes five and leaves one. That makes no sense. Right? I find out my mechanic's doing that, I'm going to scream like a mashed cat. Right? What are you doing? Hallelujah. Better change all them plugs, you monkey wrench. Amen. <laughs> Limits. Limits. Why? Because you want to hit that accelerator and hear, boom, boom, right? You don't want to hit it. And... Amen. You know, some people are okay with that. Some people are okay with hitting the accelerator and it going. Well, it runs. Barely. I'm not talking about your car. I'm talking about limits. The enemy wants to see what you are willing to live with. Why not just get totally healed? Amen. Why not just be free? Remember the story? And it wasn't a story. I mean, it happened. But remember the, 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 uh, the, the, in, in the Word of God? It says Jesus was in the temple. And there's a woman that's bowed over, could in no wise lift herself up. Right? You know, and she wasn't just stooped over. She, she couldn't. She was this way. Amen. You know, there are people that will say, well, but at least she was alive. That's called a living death. I mean, try it. How would you like to walk around this way? What can you do? And Jesus came, brought her to him in the temple and said, daughter, be loosed. Now, what was the word? Loosed. Would, would, now, now listen, didn't he say the last four months of this year there's coming a loosening? Didn't he say that? What, 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 what is that telling you in the spirit? There's things that are keeping people all bound over. And Jesus wants them loosed. Amen. And he loosed her. Woo! And the religious guy got mad. There are six days. 
to come and be healed in. It makes your head hurt, doesn't it? Somebody just gets gloriously delivered. Oh, now we went. <coughs> what was the first words out of Jesus' mouth? You hypocrite. You actor on the stage of life. That's what it means. And he said, every one of you, pointing to the religious leaders, every one of you on the Sabbath, you take your donkey or your oxen out of the barn and go water them and feed them. Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham. Now wait a minute. The Bible says that I have become spiritually the seed of Abraham. Shh. I'm a son of Abraham. You are a daughter of Abraham. Ought not that daughter of Abraham be loosed? Shouldn't this son of Abraham be loosed? Right? Amen. And the context there and the idea is that she was just like that ox or that donkey. She was tied to a stall of sickness. And Jesus came to lead her out and set her free. Religion had a problem with it. I'm telling you something. When you start breaking limits, everybody's not going to understand it. Everybody's not going to agree with it. But here's the thing. You're going to be this way one day and this way the next day. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. I feel like running. Hallelujah. Glory! 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 Yay! Ah! Woo! Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Amen. Ha, 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 ha. Jesus went back to Bethany where one of his best friends was and he had died. I'd call that a limit. Amen. And he got there on the fourth day. Amen. And, and the Jews mummified their dead. They wrapped each body part. Put the spices and the, you know, different stuff to keep the smell intact. Amen. Remember what happened? Jesus said, where'd you lay him? Amen. They said, come and see. Hallelujah. What's the, very ne- what's the very next word? Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Unbelief. Jesus was not sad because Lazarus died. He was there to raise him from the dead. <laughs> Amen. First of all, it says he groaned in his spirit. And I looked up that word groan, and it means to groan with disgust. Their unbelief frustrated him. And he said, where have you laid him? They took him. You remember the story? Roll away the stone. Watch, watch. Lord, he stinks by now. Jesus is there to raise him from the dead. He just told Mary and Martha, didn't I tell you if you would believe your brother would live again? Look at their limits. Oh, yeah, Lord, he'll, he'll live again in the resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. In other words, the resurrection and the life has showed up. I'm here. We're not waiting on the rapture. We're not waiting on the catching away. I'm here to bring him back to life. The limit breaker is here. The limit breaker is talking to you tonight. He wants to set you free from your limits. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whoo. Amen. Do you see that? And it said, when they had thus done, 
he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Amen. And now watch, this is important. Look at the next verse. And he that was dead came forth. Oh, hallelujah, wait. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound with a cloth. Now look, he's alive with limits. He's alive, but he's bound. I mean, praise God, he's, he's alive, but he's bound. What did Jesus say? Loose him. Let him go. Woo! Hallelujah. What would you do tonight if I told you you've been loosed and let go? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. That's a miracle, isn't it? It was great that he was raised from the dead. Somebody had to help him get free. Amen. Every one of us in here that I know of have been born again. We've been made free. According to Scripture, we've been made free. You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen. Amen. But right now tonight, somebody's helping you unwrap those grave clothes. They're coming off strip by strip, piece by piece, little bit by little bit. They're coming off of you. I'm telling you under the unction of the Holy Spirit, this is your last bound day. This is your last limit day. There are not going to be any more limits in your life. Glory! Woo! No more limits. No more limits. Amen. Amen. And think about that. Every appendage on his body is wrapped. Fingers, legs, arms, toes. He can't see where he's going. His face is bound. His arms are bound. His legs are bound. It's a miracle he got to the door. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. But Jesus said, we're not letting him live like that. Loose him and let him go. Loose the man and let him go. I'm telling you in the, in the Holy Spirit, in the realm of the Spirit, I'm declaring it. Loose him and let him go. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Not, 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 not just loosed from, 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 from oh, not just loose from current things, loose from your past, loose from what's been trying to hold on to you, loose from the failures, loose from the mistakes. Every time you think about the life that you are living that's so happy and so blessed, the enemy tries to bring up, what if this happens again? I'm telling you tonight, you're loose and you have been let go. Amen. Amen. And then know, you know once you're loose, you get comfortable. Scripture tells us that Jesus went back to Bethany. And they had a dinner for him. And it says he was at the table. It said Lazarus was with him too. And it says he reclined. <laughs> See, I'm telling you something. There's an ease that comes over you once you've been dead and you've been made alive. Amen. What can anybody do to you? Right. Amen. Amen. Once you've conquered death, what can anybody ever do to you? What can they threaten you with? I was dead and now I'm alive. I'm, I'm trying to explain something to you. There was a day you were dead in your trespasses and sins. You had no way to get out of it by yourself. But that very same power that raised Jesus from the dead entered into your life and found you in the darkness of your desperation and raised you from the dead. If he couldn't stop you from getting saved, he can't stop anything from coming into your life. You are free. You are free. You are free. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. So Lazarus just reclining at the table <laughs> with his buddy Jesus. Amen. That's how you are. Amen. No more limits. I'm just reclining at the table. Well, what if people don't understand? They didn't. 
They didn't. It says the religious leaders consulted also how they might put Lazarus to death. Because the fact that he was raised from the dead, many had believed on Jesus. That means there's going to be people that see what Jesus did in your life and they're going to turn their lives over to him because of what he did for you. They're going to remember how bound you were but see how free you are and ask you what happened and you're going to say, I was dead in the trespasses of my sin but there came a man one day and said, roll the stone away and he called my name and told me to come forth and I came out bound hand and feet but he set me free. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Ha ha ha. Woo! Loose the man. Let him go. Hallelujah. Look, he wasn't only bound with his appendages, he couldn't see. Couldn't see. Face was covered up. It was wrapped. You know, dead men don't need to breathe. He's dead. Been dead four days. Right? In other words, if Jesus would have showed up the second day, they wouldn't have had a problem. But now he stinks. Very same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. That restorative power. So, so, so his body was already decaying. So when Jesus said, come forth, it not only raised him from the dead, it healed and corrected everything that death had tried to destroy. And when they pulled those bandages off of him, he was totally whole and totally well and totally made clean. I'm telling you something. Everything that the past has tried to do to you, every mar, every scar, every bad spot, I'm telling you something. You're about to see new flesh. You're about to see a new life. You're about to see a new way of seeing things. Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory to God! Glory! Because He has made all things new. Woo! Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Oh. Am I helping you? The Bible says that Jesus went into the city of Nain. And it said he walked in the city and there was a funeral procession on. They were bringing out a young boy that had died. And his mother was following the coffin, weeping. And it was her only son. And she was a widow. Now this, now this has affected two people. It killed him, and now his mother doesn't have any way of making it. He's her only son. Hallelujah. But here come Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, we used to sing a song in church that said, There's a promise coming down that dusty road. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There's a promise coming your way. Amen. Jesus said, He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Glory to God. Amen. And it says he looked at the woman. He said, don't weep. And he went over and he touched the coffin and said, young man, get up. Hallelujah. And it said the dead man sat up and started speaking. And people say, oh, it's never been like this before. See, you're going to sit up and you're going to start declaring what God did for you. And people are going to say, I never heard it like that before. But you're going to say, I was there and now I'm not there. Pastor, that sounds too simple. I know, isn't it great? Yes. Yes. If you can believe. Right? That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> 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 you need to just laugh about it. 
Hallelujah. Yeah, but is it ever going to be back the way it was? No, it's going to be better. 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 It's going to be better in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Ha, 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 ha. Woo. Better. 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 Tell your neighbor, says it's going to be way better. <laughs> People are going to come in contact with you. Things are going to change. That's right. Amen. <laughs> 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 Woo! Glory. You know that Elisha died. They put him in the grave. Now listen. He was dead so long he was just bones. 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 Everybody shout bones. Bones. <laughs> and it says there came a day, they were burying a guy. <laughs> and they saw the enemy. So they said, we better do something right quick. So they said, here, here goes the tomb. They just dumped his body in there <laughs> on Elisha's bones. <laughs> I like the next verse. And the dead man came alive. When he touched the bones of Elisha, he came back to life. And the Bible says, now listen, that, that was that miracle working power that he walked in. And that power was stored in the bones of a man who wasn't even born again. Had never been filled with the Holy Ghost. The very same power that raised Jesus from the dead did not dwell in him. But it stored that anointing. And that dead man hit those bones, came to life. But for you, the very same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells on the inside of us. There is not one thing that can stay dead in your life. There's not one thing that can stay not living because the power of the living God is going to bring it to life. Glory! Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I see it coming to life. Woo! Glory! Glory! My God! My God! My God! My God! It's just gonna bump up against you. Woo! My God! My God! My God! My God! My God, 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 my God. Just bump up against you. 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 In the name of Jesus. That yes it is. 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 Glory to God. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. It's breaking. Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Breaking, 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 breaking. In the name of Jesus. The very same power. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, the very same power. That raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me. And it's bringing everything to life. Woo! Hallelujah. My God, get out of your seat and get up here. I got to get my hands on you. Glory to God. Who's shouting? Somebody was shouting. Glory to God. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. 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 H
Asa mana. Ora va se che. Eh. So mamma. So mamma. Yesho. Yesho. Ora cre. Sia. Ah. Se. Osna. Esna. Kosne me keshe. So. Se. Amashe. E so maya. Co. Sho. Oh, there it is, lady. There it is, girl. Let it, let it flow again. Let it flow again. Free. 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 Ah, there it goes. There it goes, ma'am. There it goes. Shoo. Foo, foo, foo. Foo. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Shoo. me, me, me. Shoo. Shoo. Ho, fo, fo, esa mama my keya. To the core, to the core, to the core, to the core, to the core. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Esa. Fu, si mama ye ke wo samaya. Eke, new wisdom, new wisdom, new knowledge, new understanding, more. More, more, more. Speaking divine utterances. Speaking divine utterances. Yes, yes. Even in the night, you'll wake up and I'll show you something. And you'll speak it out. And then within the week, it'll come to pass. Divine utterances in the name of Jesus. Say <laughs> Unite! Say in the name of Jesus. Si mama yeke. Oh, Rishna meke. Opa. Ere Rishna meke. Maise. Who? Ah, shoo. Ah, there it goes. There it goes. Ah, who? Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There, there's even been times you said, Lord, I don't know that I'm walking in an anointing. Yes, that anointing comes on you right now. And, 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 and now you and your husband are going to work even better together. Lord, I'll say that because that same anointing that resides on me and my wife's coming on y'all in the name of Jesus. Okay, <sighs> sure. Man, Cindy, you have seen it. You've seen God do it in Aaron. You're seeing God work in Donovan. Girl, you keep praying because it's changing. It's changing. I mean, think about all those years. You just wanted your husband to come to church with you. And you just wanted him. And now he's here and filled with the Holy Ghost and loving. Go! Come here. Take it. it oh yes it will even those moments when that sadness tries to come up no more no more because it's just about five minutes God time and we'll get to see them all again in the name of Jesus <laughs> Dave looked like he's getting ready Thirty percent increase in teaching. Yes, yes, yes. And you're going to teach in the school. Ah ha 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 
Come here, Tanya. 40% increase in revelation. And those things that you've learned by precept and example, and those things that I've taught you, and those things that I've brought you through and allowed you to walk through, and I've taught you how to overcome them, and those, those things that I've taught you and I've showed you how to trust in my word, even those things that you wrote in the book that you put out, those things, I'm going to anoint you even deeper and open more doors and give you more avenues to teach others. <laughs> And you'll walk in the anointing of your mother and your father to do it. Stand here, Ron. Come on, Jamie. Come help. Not just a title, but a calling. Not just a title, but an anointing. Not just a title of pastor, an anointing of pastor. A calling. Who? And the Lord says, you'll never know how many people in your family I had to pass over to get to you. Because I brought it to others and they wouldn't walk in it. And I offered it to them and they wouldn't walk in it. And you came back from where you were and you argued with me and you fussed at me and you told me how unworthy you were and you told me how much you'd missed it and how much you'd messed up and I told you I didn't care how much you'd missed it and how much you'd messed up and finally one night you just said, Lord, I don't care. I just want what you want. Now here it is. Now I'm telling you, not just title, but power. <laughs> to build. To expand. To enlarge. To take something from its genesis and build it up to what God wants it to be. It's in His life. <laughs> Glory to God. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Amen. Glory, to Glory to God. 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 Glory to You say, you say, but I feel like I missed it. What do I do? Just come on back. Just come on back. Just, 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 just come on back. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Nothing like a big brother, is there? <laughs> you, you're the oldest, so you didn't get that a lot. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jim, come here. Come here, Jim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come here, Jeremy. Hallelujah. Come here, Aaron. Rusty, you're all right here. Y'all just put your arms around him. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. 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 The brotherhood. The brotherhood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all just tell him. Let him know how much the Lord loves him. Hallelujah. <laughs> don't, 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 don't limit yourself by what you think. Don't limit yourself by what... <laughs> oh, I see that. I see that. Yeah, the devil said over and over again, yeah, but your pastor thinks. Don't you ever let a liar tell you what your pastor thinks. Your pastor has never lied to you, and I'll tell you what I think. And I think I love you, and I think I care about you, and I think that God's got a call on your life, so just come on back. Settles that. Take that, devil. That's right. He never, if never he, changes a son. That's what keeps coming to my heart. You're a son, and that'll never leave you. That's forever on your life. <laughs> You're loved like a son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Settles that. Yeah. <laughs> Right, you know, hit my 
it doesn't know I'm sorry about it as much as I guess now. It's starting to open up, but there's a lot of pain in my mm-hmm. arm. I came down to my arm and stuff. I've been standing. I've been walking this out. The Lord says he needs to be helped. Amen. Even though I'm standing, the anointing is in me. Amen. And it's removing the burden <laughs> and restoring the yoke off my neck. Very same shoulder. power. A very same power. I've been speaking it. I've been standing it. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to pray for her vertebrae. There's a guy. Matter of fact, you met him in Fort Worth, Ralph Manzati, him and Teresa. And uh, he came up for prayer, back issue. I reached out and touched him. Now, and, and understand this, we operate in this anointing. The, the Lord moves very strongly in two areas where healing is concerned in our ministry. Cancer, number one. And number two, bones, backs, vertebrae, hips. Tremendous success. To God be the glory. But I just reached out, and I didn't even get my hand on his back. I just reached around him, and everybody heard it all around him. His back went crack, 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 crack. I never touched him. Before it started cracking. And when I put my hand on it, you could still feel bones moving. Amen. So... If it's opening, it can close. That's right. That's right. It, it, it needs to be open. <laughs> All right. So, if it's, it, so it needs to open. It okay. needs completely, it needs to come open because it had come together and there's oh, spurs huh? are starting to stick well, out. Well, here it goes. And I'm coming to be whole. Not, I'm whole. <laughs> oh. oh, it's hot. <laughs> it's very hot. <laughs> Well, I feel that's moving. You, <laughs> Kathleen, that just lengthened. <laughs> Under my hand, it, I, it, it, it's still going. I bet you you go home and measure, you're taller. It just went. It just went. It just went. <laughs> From, Done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just started growing. Isn't that good? Huh? <laughs> I agree. <laughs> and I'm telling you something, Michelle. I know we've been standing for some things. <laughs> but every time we preach, and that individual's under the anointing, that Zoe life's flowing into them. That's right. And they can call it what they want. A syndrome, yes. whatever it is, Come on. it's what the life of God is working on. Yes. And it's driving it out. Yes. And, and I just, you can call it an instruction or whatever you want. Every time you see even a minor change, you shout about it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. telling you, Amen. not just a title, an anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you in front of everybody, it's not a light thing. 
It's a heavy thing. It's a responsibility, but it's a joy. You do it right, and it's light and easy. Hallelujah. 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 And I'm telling you something, and y'all do whatever you want to with this. You were going to a church in uh, Excelsior Springs, is that right? And I don't even know how y'all found out about us. Kenneth Copeland. Brother Copeland, he's my partner. <laughs> he tells people about me all the time. <laughs> you understand, his website, we're yeah. partners. <laughs> Don't want anybody to go, he knows Ken Copeland. <laughs> well, I do in the spirit. <laughs> but here when I say this, it didn't have to be y'all. Because just like anybody else, he spoke to other people and told them to show up on those Sunday night services because they were looking for a father. They were looking for something. They said they were, and they didn't do it. But you saw that, and you decided to come. And when you got here, you found out something you wanted. Come up here, both of you. You're going to walk in a new measure. Now, you've got to understand, I'm going to pray for them, but I'm reaching a point in my ministry where this is more and more important because there's things God's going to ask me to do and ask me to move into, and people got to carry the anointing that's on this house. Right. Now, listen, this, and, and you do whatever you want to with this. I'm not trying to be vague. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit's saying because I've spent 21 years digging the foundation yes. and making it strong. Amen. Now it's time to go up. And I got to have help to go up. Yes. Amen? Amen. There, there's been times, and those of you that have been with us, there's been times Pastor Michelle and I have been the only ones digging that. Not that people weren't bringing their supply. We were the only ones. There were times we were the only preachers. And we just had to keep plowing the ground and plowing the ground. Well, now I'm replete with creatures. Creatures. <laughs> A new creature. Right. A new creature. <laughs> Amen. I'm, I'm looking right here. One, two, three, four, five. Just, just right here. And there's some that aren't even here. Five anointed men and women of God standing right here. But the Lord said over you, He said those things that He's taught you and those things that He's wa allowed you to walk through, your story... is more than a testimony. It's a testimony of God's goodness, but you're living proof. And when I say this, understand that the Holy Spirit said this, that somebody can actually come as close to a living hell as anybody ever has and came out of it on the other side better. Amen. Not because of the experience, but because of what you latched on to. And there are people, Tanya, that will look at you and they'll say, well, she doesn't get excited about this or she doesn't this. No, it's, it's not that. You've learned to absorb what God is saying and take it in. Now, we should all shout. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying at times. But there's times God wants you to just grab a hold of something. Hallelujah. And you're going to start seeing it in the kids' meetings but it's going to translate over into the adult meetings, and there's 30% increase in teaching coming on your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A new measure, a new measure, a new measure. Faithfulness has opened the door. Faithfulness has caused you to be in place, and faithfulness has caused you to be in line for this increase. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. 30% increase in preaching ability. And where you found it hard to understand the concept and you found it hard to bring it into words and to put it on paper in an outline, you watch. When next time you sit down to study, it's going to be so easy, it's going to amaze you. Come here, come here, come here, John. 
the Lord told me to ask you a question. Do you desire to minister? Absolutely. Is that what you want to do with the rest of your life? Absolutely. Then take that anointing and go do it. God shows up for people that desire something. And you got to keep desiring the ministry God's placed in your life. And you got to keep going after it. Amen. There are people I know that are great preachers. They are tremendous preachers. But they no longer desire the ministry. And you got to desire it. It's got, it's, got, it's got to be why I, I am alive. Amen. And, and I used to tell people all the time, I made a million mistakes. My wife said, quit talking about it. But I, I say this just to, to understand. Everybody in here is imperfect in yourself. But listen, when a man or a woman gets under the anointing, they're anything but normal. And when you let that anointing start working in your life and you start walking in it and functioning in it, things start changing. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. Come here, Jim. Hallelujah. 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 Now, there is a safety and there's a security and there's a steadiness when you teach. People just feel safe. And you've even went to the Lord, and you've said to the Lord before, well, Lord, you know, I don't know that I'm that dynamic. You know, I mean, you know, I don't, I'm not like my pastor. I don't, you know, I don't run, and I don't. <laughs> well, it's like the woman told another man, you're just getting in touch with the colorful side of God. You understand? That's what he's placed in your life. People need that steadfastness. They need that security of a teacher. That can just stand behind the pulpit and maybe go two steps this way and two steps that way. But I've heard you teach and you've said things I thought, my God, that's good. Amen. And you especially have an anointing to teach on following. And you especially have an anointing to teach on how to be a help and how to help those that you're serving function in their anointing at a higher level. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But tonight, 40% increase in teaching in Jesus' name. Now, you didn't know it. When you married him, you thought you were marrying a guy that worked for Alan Press. You were marrying a preacher. And, and Carrie, I, I know you know this, but I want to remind you, you just wanted him to get saved. Now he's in full-time ministry. She just wanted him saved. She'd have been happy having him saved at Allen Press. Now he makes his living in the ministry. What's that? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Family night. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, the foundation's secure. I'll, I would stake my life and reputation on the solidity of this foundation. Amen. 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 And that land we're going to buy. And that building we're going to build, there's other anointings in here that are going to help us do it. Right. I don't have to do it all anymore. Amen. I don't have to do it all anymore. Amen. I got help. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And very soon, very soon, we're starting evangelism classes. Amen. Rusty and Amy are going to put on evangelism classes. Do you realize this year, and, and, and I'm not saying this braggingly, and they're not bragging on it, and he's not bragging on it. This year, just the two of them, they've seen over a thousand people saved. One on one. Now, Rusty, if I get the numbers wrong, you can tell me. In Fort Worth this past week, he and Amy saw over 200 people led to the, is that right? Just you two. 230 people. One on one. I want that anointing flowing in my church. And guess what? 
the last four months of this year, it's going to be even more. They might win a thousand in the last four months. So they're going to come. You're going to spend an hour, a couple hours with them. They're going to teach. And then you're going to go out in the street and use what you've been taught. Amen. We saw something this past week, didn't we? We got out in the neighborhoods. We had our, our back to school blast. Gave away these backpacks full of school supplies. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People heard the gospel. They're hungry. They want it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Come here, Rusty. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, Much of what you've done, you've done just because you desired to do something for God. And you've even let the Lord know, you know, I'll preach and teach wherever you want me to. But man, when you go out and you get on the street, there's just something that starts burning in your spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you know you have the answer. And your mindset is, if I had the antidote to every disease in the world, why wouldn't I get out and get as many people the antidote as I could? Oh, glory. 30% increase in that evangelistic anointing. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> See, you didn't know you were marrying a preacher. Far from it. Isn't that great? And, and I'm going to say something just real publicly. You know, some, sometimes people say, well, Rusty, he's awful bold. He's almost brash. Listen, listen, don't mistake that. That's that evangelistic anointing. Amen. Amen. He's not being cocky. He's just, that's that anointing. I'm, I'm, I'm very sure about the anointing on my life to pastor. People say, are you a good pastor? Yes, I am. I'm a real good pastor. Because God doesn't have any bad ones. <laughs> and you watch. You watch. When you sing, people are going to get free. But you can't keep holding back. There's times you hold back. You feel like stepping out and singing in the Spirit and doing things. That anointing's on this house. This, that anointing's on me. I just give it to you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> whoever, whoever thought Sarah would be dating a preacher? Amen. Amen. That's right. Amen. Glory to God. Isn't that good? Yes. Man, it's waist deep up here. Hallelujah. Because you're going to come to the place and you watch. And, you, and, and I'm saying this publicly. I'm not puffing anybody up. I'm doing what the Lord told me to do tonight. You're going to come to the place where you're going to go in a place and people are going to come over and sit down at your table and say, Sir, you convict me of my sin. And you didn't say anything to them. You just keep letting God work in your life. And you keep working the fruits of godliness and the fruits of holiness. And it'll just shine forth out of you. Don't worry about what people think and what people say. You are who you are and your personality is what it is. You be bold and you be straightforward and you be compassionate and you be loving. And you watch people who come to Jesus in the multitudes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We need every gift in this church. Because the gift of the pastor cannot perfect the church by himself. Or by herself. Every church won't have an evangelist, but we do. Amen. 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 Every church won't have other teachers beside the pastor, but we do. Why? Because God wants it hashtag big. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Aaron, I'm telling you, you see things and you hear things in your spirit. And I'm going to say it just the way the Holy Spirit said to me, but you've been a coward. And you, you won't step out sometimes and, and say it. 
because your past keeps coming up. And you've even had family members that have blamed some of the issues that you face on your past. And that's because you did this and because you did that. Well, I'm telling you something. That's a lie. Amen. 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 Maybe your mistakes was bigger than some of ours, but they were, none, no, they were no more deadly. Look what God did to you. Yes. Look what God did for you. Yes. Here you sit with your wife beside you, yes. and you're in the ministry together. You got all of your children here, saved, serving God. Amen. They were just in a miraculous meeting where the Holy Spirit specifically spoke to your daughter, specifically, and your sons. Amen? Yes, sir. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Don't you be a coward no more. Yes, sir. You step out and you tell what God's telling you to tell. Yes, and, and you'll find freedom in those areas that you've been trying to get victory over because once you release the power of the Holy Spirit and you start functioning in it, all those bondages got to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glad I came to church tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 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 and, and I want you to understand something else. If I, if I prayed for your spouse and I didn't pray for you, that doesn't mean you don't have a part. You got a part with them. Amen. Hallelujah. We, listen, we used to go places all the time, and it seemed like people would pinpoint me. First time I ever went to Pastor Morton's church, I went home. Is it okay if I tell you this story? Yeah. Y'all in a hurry? No. I went home, and you've heard the story. I, I was tired of playing church. And I mean, every, everywhere, I, everywhere I would go, it was just, you know, and I, we were walking one day, my wife and I were walking, and I said, uh, I said, if there's not more power and more reality than what I'm seeing, I said, you know what? I'm not going to backslide on God. I've been, I've been saved all these years. I'm not near about ready to go to hell. I said, but we're just going to go to a, a big church and, and sit in the back and pay our tithe and take our kids to church and just be saved and, you know, and my wife's very wise. Guys, your, your wives are very wise. And it, it would do you a lot of good to listen to them. Ladies, that's a good place for you to say. So I came home one Wednesday. She said, oh, Philip, I heard this preacher on the radio. And I said, don't, I don't want to hear anything about no preacher. And I wasn't backslid. It's just the way it was. I'm making a point with this. And uh, so she said, well, you know, he's down, he's down here. I said, all right. So we went, and y'all know how I am about dressing for church. And uh, I purposely dressed in a t-shirt and a pair of jeans and some uh, running shoes. Because I thought I'm going to look as little like a preacher as I can. Because every time I go to church, they're calling me out. I'm, I'm making a point with this. And everywhere we went to church, they did. They called me out. It seemed like they'd speak over my life. They wouldn't call my wife out, speak over her. But she knew she had a call on her life. Well, we went to that church that night, and I'll forever be grateful for this. We went to that church that night, and the first person he called out was my wife. And he called her out begin to talk to her about the anointing and the calling on her life. I don't remember everything he said, but I remember when he laid hands on her, she went out. And Pastor Michelle's not a frequent flopper. She doesn't give courtesy flops. If it's there, she's gone. If it's not, I've seen people try to bend her over. Isn't it? You want to go up and say, hey, look, Jack's not happening. <laughs> Amen. Then he called me out, and he looked at me in the eye. He said, the other day, two days ago, and it was true. He said, two days ago, you were praying in your room, and you told the Lord, you said, if there's not more to it than this, I just, I'll just take my family to a church, and we'll, just, we'll, we'll be saved, and we'll serve the Lord. And he said, but there is more. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Your, your mistakes can never take you farther than God's mercy can bring you back. <laughs> Matter of fact, His mercy puts you on the fast track. Because here's the good news. When you get back in the race, you get to start where you quit. You're, you're already up on the game. Isn't that good? So, I full well expect to see you walking in it. Hallelujah. I expect to see you walking in it. Expect to see you walking in it. Yeah, you thought it was going to be the other side. John was like, crossed his eyes. I expect to see you walking in it. I got a lot of time invested in you. God's got a lot of time invested in you. He gave you favor and worked miracles for you. Things should have went a lot worse for you than they did. Don't you back off. Don't you let him back off. Go tell him. So good. So, as we're preparing to go, and Pat, the Lord has told me this three times now. You'll never know how much you support things in the Spirit because you pray. And you pray for your pastors, and you pray for your church, and you pray for other people. And that support structure is vital in the spirit hallelujah and you know how to do it Lord 30% increase in understanding <laughs> wow in the name of Jesus I believe God I believe God something this came up to me if Floyd would have known better he would have done better and there were times it seemed mean and hard he, he didn't know he didn't know but the Lord told me to tell you something he loved you more than anybody in this world and in reality, he would have done anything for you. He just didn't know how. He just didn't know how. But when you see him again, it's going to be the man he always should have been. And listen, for all of us, about 10 more minutes, God time. I believe you're free. We have been loosed and let go. I mean that. Hallelujah. I 
exalt thee. such a sweet presence and I want you to understand we've been praying for this Pastor Michelle and I have been pressing into this Lord we want the manifestation of your presence in our services every time we're together now Carrie I don't know what it is about that artery I laid hands on you today and the power of God flowed through that carotid artery in your body. And I'm telling you something. If it's, it's just like, this is what I heard the Lord say to me. It's like going to have a screening and they, they take that radar and they put it on that artery and they look for whether it's clogged or not. I'm not saying it was clogged. I'm saying this is what the Lord told me. It's traveling through your body and it's going to affect your heart. It's going to affect your heart. And you're going to hear those words. We figured it out. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So I know normally we would say our vision. But tonight, once again, I just, I really want us to just go home in this environment. Amen. I mean, you want to fellowship and shake hands, that's fine. But I just don't want to dismiss us out of this presence and just be gone. Hallelujah. So know that we love you, God loves you. Hallelujah. We're, we're looking forward to a great Wednesday night united. And then, of course, Pastor Michelle will be back with you next Sunday ministering the Word. Be sure and tell somebody what a time we're having. Amen. Amen. Tell them that they need to be healed or set free. They need a miracle. You know a place. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? God bless you.